Welcome to another episode. This episode, I had the pleasure of having Sydney flagging on. She's an amazing in-person trainer here in the Pasadena area. I had the pleasure of meeting her very early on in the pandemic. Um, I think it was even prior to us opening here at Space Bar Wellness. Just a really great person. And ever since, we've been able to connect on a couple different occasions. Um, but I've really just kind of watched her grown and watched from afar via Instagram and social media. So it's one of those scenarios where I felt like I really got to know her or I got to see her grow her business and grow her presence on, on you know in the online space. And it was really awesome to have this conversation with her, um, just kind of shooting the shit a little bit, talking about her business, talking about the mindset, talking about the way that she's grown and shifted as an individual, coming from a bit of a background of getting into a little bit of trouble, maybe making some some poor choices or you know dabbling with drugs and and how she came out of that to to, to now operate in a flourishing personal training business and um, no longer choosing to drink and how she's become okay with, with not necessarily being the life of the party. Um, a big part of this, this new series of, of shows for me is to highlight people that are really out here in these streets, um, servicing the local community, um, and having in-person presence while also playing the game of, of business and, and putting their best foot forward on social media and in a very authentic way. So, Appreciate you guys for coming in and joining us. And now enjoy the episode. y'all welcome back to another episode i have sydney flegan joining me today she is a local pasadena trainer and coach and um stoked to have a conversation uh the point of kind of my efforts here is to get to know other local business owners that are actually like in real life doing the work seeing what's working well for them seeing how they're servicing their clients um, learning a little bit more about their business but even more so a little bit more about themselves uh, because it's really hard to, to operate. At least I've, I've just, I've discovered it's very hard to operate a business outside of yourself. So like my businesses are very much reflections of like who I am, my values, the things that I think are important. Um, and, and I would imagine that in part your businesses, the way you coach your clients are a reflection of you too. So, you know, we'll chat a little bit more, hopefully uncover some of those things, but First off, thank you so much for making some time and joining us here. Thank you so much. What an introduction. Well, <laughs> and you well, actually didn't butcher my name. Not too bad. No, it was, I mean, it was not bad. I was worried about it, but I, but you got it. Uh, I think it was, I think it, the coaching you gave me was, it's kind of like flexing yes, and that's what right. I, I got that as you're over here just doing, you're just flexing on me right now. No. Yeah. So if you Calm haven't, down. if you haven't seen her on IG again, another thing. Um, I really um, appreciate from her is her consistency in posting, adding real value. Um, and um, yeah, just sharing from that, sharing authentically, you know, sharing the times that, you know, she needs to just log off and, you know, go ghost mode um, and, and really trying to balance the hustle. I know it's not easy. Maybe we can talk about that as well. Um, it's definitely something I struggle with, but um, let's just, let's just kind of unpack today and let me know how, like, what is your normal day? What does, what does today look like for you? So my normal day is I usually wake up around, I mean, is that where you want to yeah, start? Yeah, just like, I want to just unpack what today looks like. Usually yeah. I, I wake up at 4.30, but I don't really get out of bed immediately. Sometimes I hit snooze for like another 15 minutes. Sometimes I get up right away, but for the most part, no. Mm -hmm. Have my coffee and then I have my first set of clients at 6 a.m. And I work probably, I'd say from like 6 a.m. to 11, sometimes 12 and then I'll have like a two, three hour break. And then I go back to work at like 3.30, 4.30 till I'd say 6.30, sometimes 7.30. And then I go horseback riding. So my days are usually very packed. Daily, every day? So horseback riding is every other day. And then the schedule that I just said is it's pretty consistent. But yeah. every single day there are some cancellations, yeah. you know, things happen. But, you know, if I have a full day where everything goes right, that is how it goes. Yeah. So that, that but I love it. <laughs> that early morning wake up. Is that something that you always been doing? No, no, definitely not. Why, I come from shift? a um, bartending background. Mm -hmm. So that's probably when I would be getting home. Back yeah. In the day. 
So it, but is it, has it become your new normal yes, and natural? Absolutely. If I don't set an alarm, I naturally wake up at like the, maybe the latest is six or seven. Mm. And I can't really imagine waking so up past it. I feel so like I'm wasting possible. my day. It's possible for people to wake up early. Oh, if 100%, they really want to. 100%. Yeah. Um, I know you're very, you know, you, you're very motivated person and it comes across and, and, not and not, not discipline. Well, there you go. <laughs> discipline. discipline. Um, and, and these are new characteristics and new traits for you because prior to getting into fitness, um, I know a little bit about your background about, you know, maybe a little bit more of a, a you know, a party lifestyle and, and, yes. um, make, make, maybe making not the best choices. At what point did you embrace, you know, the discipline needed to, to lead the life that you're leading now? Well, for me, it started probably a pandemic. So prior to pandemic, I was bartending and that's when I was, you know, drinking a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I always, I have struggled like now that I'm, I've been so sober almost a whole year now. I think it's congratulations so much. in a couple of days, it'll be a full year. Wow. So I think the longer I've been sober, the more I'm realizing the shift that I had and that I really have struggled with alcohol probably since the first sip I ever had it, which was, I think I was 15, mm -hmm. 16. And it kind of just snowballed into different drugs, you know, not living obviously a healthy lifestyle. And then once the pandemic happened, I did have an incident happen right before the pandemic. That's something I'm not ready to share with the whole world, but it kind of triggered me to drink even more. Yeah. Now that I'm sober, I'm realizing that's why I drank so much. Gotcha. And then during the pandemic, you know, we had all this time, so nothing to do. So I drank more. Mm -hmm. And then the main thing that happened was the last time I, you know, I woke up in my throw up and that's when I realized like, this, you know, if I keep going, it's, I'm not going to be able to keep going anymore. This yeah. is it. So that was a really big shift for me. And then from that point on, I, it was April 13th. I'll never forget. Three days before my birthday. <laughs> Let me make the story about me real quick. Seven days before 420. That's what I remember. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, so that kind of happened. And from that day on, I decided I want to really try to stop drinking because I've tried before several yeah. times, but I would last maybe a month. And then, you know, as a tree of it, okay, I can have a drink. And then it would happen again, yeah. snowball right back into my old habits. So this time I just took an approach of, you know, day by day, I woke up from that day on, I actually wrote a journal online, well, not online, just, you know, on my computer. Yeah. It's not, not, Isn't that a blog post. Yeah, maybe, maybe one day I'll reveal it. Publish but it. every day I woke up, I just wrote a reason on why I'm quitting drinking, why it's a good idea, how it affected me negatively. Mm -hmm. And then having done that for a couple of weeks, it really, kind of kickstarted it. And I would go back when I would have temptations, go back and read. I'm like, okay, yeah. this is why I'm not drinking. This is not good. And then to keep myself busy from drinking, I decided, you know, during the pandemic, the gyms were closed. But I was like, I need to just stay active. That's going to help me get my mind off of it. Yeah. So I started doing park workouts and that's when I started getting a few clients through the park workouts. And I thought, you know, once the pandemic is over, maybe I will go back to bartending. Yeah. But as time went on, I realized that I just have a passion for training people. And I was, I did it in the past for friends, just for fun, mm -hmm. but I never really thought I could make a career out of it. So the pandemic definitely started that. Yeah. I was able to get a spot at a local gym here. The owner reached out to me through my Instagram asking if I needed a space for my clients instead of being out in the hot sun. So I definitely jumped on that opportunity and that kick started again, my passion now, which yeah. I was very thankful for. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's, um, quite the success story, you know, even just in that small span of a couple of years from again, bartending, drinking quite a bit to not, not having like the best environment of stepping into even fitness, but still taking ownership of what you could do, which was like, go out to, to the parks and, and start training there and working out there and just like one step to the next. Right. So people are always trying to figure out how to get into a particular career. And, and, um, you know, they're constantly just asking for help and they don't maybe don't really know where to, where to start. So they're just you know, the side of the road, essentially with their thumb up, expecting for somebody to come and pick them up and put them on yeah. versus just looking down the road and starting to walk. And then as you continue to walk and you're taking steps on your own in order to, to put yourself on this path, you know, the, the right person might then pull over and, and pick you up because you're already doing what you need to do. Right. And showing that passion. And for you, that was uh, that gym owner. Right. And it's like, Hey, exactly. there's this opportunity, you know, and um, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. In regards to like the alcohol stuff and, and drinking, um, some of those, those, those tactics that you are using, um, did someone ad advise you to do that or did you come up on your no, own I as far did, as I the just journaling? Did it on my own I, yeah. because everything I've tried prior to not like trying to quit drinking didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then again, with the pandemic, I had so much time on my hands. So I'd wake up, what do I do aside? You know, yes, I get my movement in, 
have my couple of part clients and then the rest of them. Okay. So then, yeah, just writing helps. And I remember even when I was in high school, I used to love writing. And then I don't know, somewhere between high school and I guess partying, I just, I lost that passion. And I, I feel like back then I was maybe a little talented. Like I, again, cause I enjoyed it Yeah. and I've been losing it, but I'm trying to get back into it because at one point, you know, it did give me joy. And then yeah. realizing that back, you know, when I was trying to get sober, that it really, it was a huge tool, like just writing everything out. And I'm sure, you know, people preach it all the time, write it out, write it out. And you yeah. kind of like, eh, whatever, but it really does. It helps. And it makes, it just feels more um, concrete when you write it down. And sure. I feel like it holds me more accountable when I actually, you know, read something like I don't drink because it's so-and-so. Mm. So that's, that's a big, big step. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, <clears throat> and I relate to that. I mean, I think, um, you know, we talked a little bit about like I gave up alcohol, you know, over, I don't even know, you know, cause it was just a, a decision. So I don't know what date it was necessarily. Isn't that great though? Like, but that's usually how it I happened. Know, I know it was around like the 4th of July. Um, cause there wasn't, there wasn't necessarily a rock bottom thing for me. Mm -hmm. There which was, is, there was definitely you know, some stories there. I'll, 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 um, I'll share it, I guess. <laughs> so like for me, my relationship with alcohol was, was like many others probably is like you drink to get drunk, you know, you're going to go hard, you know, there's no, it wasn't, it wasn't the beer with dinner you know, and then also coming from like the fitness space as I was, you know, getting into my, you know, mid to late twenties and, you know, um, being a gym owner and whatnot. Um, a lot of the drinking was around, um, like tracking say macros or whatever it might be. Right. So it's like, I, you know, knowing that, you know, once you have alcohol in your system, your body is prioritizing getting that alcohol out of your system. Yeah, so, I wish more people knew that. Right? So it's like, you know, for me, so and with that, I would be like, okay, if I'm drinking, I'm only drinking and I'm going to get smashed yeah. and I'm not going to eat anything, you know? So it's like, you're going to get drunk probably even faster that way or whatever I be, Cause you know, you just, just, there's no like substance like in, in your body. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I would, I would do these little hacks. And then I was probably, you know, the leanest that I ever was like when I was drinking, because it was very strategic, um, around that, you know, I was very conscious of those types of decisions. And since I could get away with drinking, and it not influencing my physique in a bad way, which at that age was like one of my main motivators. You know what I mean? That's like, That's oh, I can get away though. with this. That's pretty hard to do because usually when you drink, like at least for me, but it was when I would drink, I would get like the shittiest food. You know, I just well, like yeah, pizza, that, that would also happen. And... But say the Monday through Saturday <laughs> mm -hmm. or whatever it was, I was so strict on you know, my diet, right? You know, like you know, I found you know my my whole. Um, uh, uh, like integration into like all that I know now is because I would just go hard on certain things. So, you know, also back probably 20, like 2007 or something like that, I come across like the zone diet. So it was like mm -hmm. all basically macros. That's when I was introduced into macros. So I go hard on researching that and understanding that. Then it was like segueing into paleo and segueing into keto. So like I had these very strict regimens that I would follow. Um, that was not healthy at all. You know what I mean? And I would, would do these things and then I would go hard on say, you know, every couple of weeks drinking. And even if I did smash some like crazy desserts or whatever it was, it was like, I was so dialed in on this ridiculous lifestyle, you know, and not even seeing like major gains from it because in reality, yeah, those, those poor decisions when I was drinking or eating shit food would off balance all the, the work that I thought that I was doing. So that there was this perception of like, that I was always dialed, but I was rarely really dialed. Um, but exhausting. it was, it really was. And I, you know, I was that guy, you know, judging people's food choices and, and giving unsolicited advice and, and all of that, like it was really, really annoying, you know? So, um, but I'm glad I went through all that because where I'm at right now is like a very balanced approach. Um, and I've come back to like the foundations of things, you know, but I've spent a lot of time and years in that other kind of rabbit hole of, of always thinking that it has to be some crazy thing to get you the results because I'm somehow uniquely special and I have a slow metabolism or whatever the yeah. narrative is that I need this thing or I need to train in this particular way because I just can't build muscle or, or I can't lose body fat. So I need this little niche of a weird thing versus just the foundations. And now, you know, I 100% know that that to be true. Um, and kind of have lived through a lot of those different versions to kind of come to that conclusion for myself. And so it all had to happen. Um, but shit, anyway, I, I think I was trying to tell a story about why I stopped drinking. <laughs> 
<laughs> so let me get back to that real quick um, because I think the point in, in sharing some of these stories about why we choose to stop drinking or the path that we tor- took towards stop drinking it can be very individual individualistic and where most of that is very systemized so like we feel like we might need to go to like in order to stop drinking we have to go to AA a system that was built around some becoming sober yeah I've me, actually I've been to one AA meeting but this was like years ago I went with a friend and thinking back, I don't even know why I went because I definitely, I was at that point, I wasn't trying to be sober at all, but yeah. I just went with, but just went where you're yeah, I mean, when it, it's, it. it's cool because it does help you. Yeah, it was that for me, it just, I, it, it's just not. Yeah. Not for me either. Not so, me. <laughs> so I might, you know, again, you know, my point is that, you know, there can be unconventional approaches for you to you know, get, get sober or whatever it might be. So my story, why I stopped drinking was at this point we, we had owned, we opened up and we're, you know, the fit bar down in Orange County and, um, really like awesome property on the beach. And we're doing the fit bar superfood cafe and running that whole thing. And we had been open for probably about four or five months. So I was the one in there operating it all the time and getting to know regulars and people would come in every morning for their coffee. And since it was like largely me working, working the fit bar and, and, and talking to people, you know, building like relationships real quickly. So we opened in like December. Um, it was Easter. So it was somewhere around April sometime around then. Um, I, there was a, there was a particular customer that, that we, we had closed early mm-hmm. and because it was super slow and a customer was like, Hey, we're across the street at this dive bar. So me and Laura, my girlfriend went over there for some drinks and one thing led to another, just more drinks, more drinks. We walked back over to the fit bar and she was like, Oh, and, and the kicker is that her 16 year old daughter was also, with her, with six, us, 16, 16 or six, 16 year old okay. daughter was also with us. And we went back to the fit bar that's where their car was parked. And we we're like, Oh, let's go back to their house. So she was like, Oh, come back to our house. So I was like, <laughs> you know, we're all pretty drunk. Everyone was drunk there. And like, I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And then she was like, Oh, I got, I have this little a bar, like Fiat one of those small little cars. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, I used to have a Fiat. She's like, Oh, you want to drive it? And I was mm-hmm. like, uh, sure. So you know, I jumped in the car and we're driving it. Laura, you know, my girlfriend was there and the mom was there, the lady was there and the daughter. And well, I feel like should have been driving just, at this probably, point. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and so I'm smashing down this little green belt. So like where this property is, it's like houses, street, beach. And I'm, you know, I own a business right there. I own this property. People know me there. And I'm just mm-hmm. like dipping down this it's like street as I go to their house and we end up getting back to their house. Like at this point, still no reflection about like what I was doing. So go through, we end up drinking the entire night or whatever. And somehow, you know, getting back home, I'm sure we Ubered or got a ride or whatever, you know, and then just waking up the next day and just thinking, what the hell am I doing? You know, I got away with that. I've gotten away with a lot of different things. So therefore, like I'm, you know, again, I'm, there was never this rock bottom of getting caught or this, 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 this thing or that thing that happened to me, but just being able to reflect on that when I was sober, I was like, so many people know me here as like this health and wellness person in this space. Um, there was a 16 year old person in the car, even though her mom was like all for what we were doing, like still, I know, but yeah, we're just like not in the right mental state. You huge, don't think about that. Huge cognitive dissonance between what I was doing and like the person that I wanted to become or the person that I thought I was. So that was a huge, um, awakening for me. And then, you know, a few months passed and I wasn't really drinking at that point because I didn't drink all the time. But when I did things like that would go down and then come the 4th of July, you know, I had some new employees now at that point, cause we had been open for probably, you know, eight months or so. So there was employees with me and they they tend to be younger, you know, working at the smoothie bar with me mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, we were closed for the 4th of July and same thing kind of happened. Like it was just kind of drinking. I, w- I wasn't too out of control or anything like that, but to the point where I couldn't really remember what I was saying or doing the, 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 the next out. day. Right. And it's like, <laughs> exactly. And so, although I know, you know, people around me, you know, I know I didn't do or say anything inappropriate. I couldn't help because I couldn't really remember what I was saying. And again, it just hit me like the, the next couple of days of like, dude, like what, what the hell, you know, like you can't put yourself in those positions. No. Um, and you get that, that anxiety. I right. can't, ugh, I just, I hope I never get back to that point where I wake up. I'm like, what did I do? And I check my phone. I'm like, Oh, I'm like yeah. scared of the text messages, phone calls, pictures. Yeah. And- I mean, and I, and since then I haven't had that feeling ever, you know, cause I've been so clear headed. I mean, I've, I've used other substances. It's kind of altered my state, but never any, I never, I've never had that feeling since that I stopped. Is, so great. It, is, it really is. I mean, and like, so amazing, you know, and yeah. it's like that, that's, we work so hard to be the people that we, we want to be. And 
Um, sometimes I think people think that that's easy, but it takes so much work to, to, um, to not just present that, but to be that, you know, and, and to carry yourself in a certain way and then to put yourself in a weak moment of like just complete, completely exposed and, and it's just not a place to be. And like, that was the time where I was like, okay, I'm just going to, just going to stop. Um, and for me, what was helpful was not that like, I told myself, like, I'm not stopping forever. Like it doesn't need to be that's, forever. That's what I say too. Cause that, that sets you up for failure every single yeah, time. Like, and, and I, and I'm, and I like, and I, I'm, I never wanted to be straight edge. You know, I'm not a straight edge type of person. It's just knowing that alcohol, there's literally nothing good that comes from alcohol. No, and that's the crazy thing. Like, when you really look it up, you're like, and some people say, you know, and I used to want to do it. Well, I like the taste. I love having a beer. I love the wine. It's like, and there's other mm-hmm. things that taste delicious. Yeah. But yeah. that have benefits. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you can't say that you like that better than some other things. <laughs> right. It's you just, you're I mean? just lying to yourself. For sure. So, you know, for me, that's the one thing that I left open and knowing that I was going to actively learn about other substances, say, you know, a, a healthier relationship with cannabis, cause I didn't smoke much. So mm-hmm. there was a huge opportunity there for me to embrace that or psilocybin or some other plants that could open me up to more growth, you know, and knowing that that was a, an option for me that, you know, if I wanted to alter my state, then I could do that. And the other point was, you know, I always saw myself as like the life of the party or the person who um, was always, you know, seeking attention or whatever it might be. And, you know, the, the outgoing person when, without alcohol, I, I wasn't, you know, so it, it allowed me to really, um, reflect on that and be like, man, maybe you're not that outgoing and that's okay. You know, because we've always been told that the, the outgoing, um, person, uh, the very eccentric life of the party is, is like the, the, the better characteristic. Well, that, that's exactly, yeah. that's why I drank too. I always wanted to be the center of attention. It's funny how much has shifted because now I kind of, I like step back. I'm like in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I just, it's definitely not, I, I'd rather be more secluded and I can't stand crowds now where it's like in my early twenties, I always wanted to go to parties and meet new people. And now I'm definitely more reserved. And kind of like you said, you're realizing it's okay. Like, I don't need to be this like social butterfly. I don't, I I just, so again, it still comes, I'm still learning a lot about myself, but I'm definitely, and that comes with like age too. You change every few years, I feel like as a person, but now I'm finally figuring out who I am, what I'm about. And what I don't want to be, yeah, do which you, is I mean, 20 year olds. In me. I mean, do you feel the urge to kind of be a little more social? Or do you feel, you know, cause well, I guess, first off, have you removed yourself from like social? Experience? Yeah. I, I, I kind of stay away from crowds a lot, but the funny thing is I love going to the gym and as much as I, I like an empty gym, sometimes I, I like when it's busy being around people but that I don't have to talk to. Yeah. Like I just, I feel like that's where I get my, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but I get that like a little dose of being social, I guess, yeah. but without the pressures of like having to talk to everybody, gotcha. making it all about me, you know, no, I just, it's comforting to be around people, but I, I love my solitude. I mm-hmm. like thrive being at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, with, um, I guess, uh, where am I going with that? <laughs> no, I mean, it's around being social and, um, do you, like for, for me, I guess when I removed drinking, I also removed being social. Mm-hmm. So I was a lot more secluded. And over time, I guess at the same time, I was like getting buried with like business stuff and like opening up another business and coming up to Pasadena and open up these businesses up here. So like, I was so busy doing that the whole time that in part not drinking, then in part being so like going all in like hard, you know, like not doing anything social, everything became about these businesses. And I, f- had a moment of like, man, like I'm not really enjoying life. Like there's nothing that I'm doing that is like going to be something that I'd look back on and be like, Oh, that was really, um, really fun for me. Yeah. I can be proud of some of the things that I created, but there was nothing fun happening in my life. So more recently I've been like trying to figure out a way to get out a little bit more and being more social. Um, not necessarily in bars. I mean, I'll definitely go out to a bar or whatever it is, but those are different conversations that I'm not really trying to have with people. You know, it's just like, (laughs) not very fun. So I'm, I guess, making an effort to become more social because I'm missing out on, I think a lot of relationships, you mm-hmm. know, like even like friendships and, and all that stuff has kind of fallen back to the, you know, to the wayside because I've just been so inundated with what I've been doing. So I'm definitely there too. And having moved here from Arizona like five years ago now, I really don't have like a, like when I was in Arizona, you know, I, I hadn't, I had a pretty big group of friends and here I really don't, but at the same time, 
I don't mind it. So I do go through those stages too, though, where I think I'm like, am I not living my life to the fullest? You know, because again, it's like social media, you look at like, all these people are doing these cool things. They're going on trips together. Yeah. And then I get kind of like, hmm, maybe I should be doing that. But then I do have this moment too. It's like, it's, it goes back and forth. I'm like, no, I am happy. Like I'm okay with being at home or doing things by myself. I love my like solo beach days or, you know, I take my brother's dog for a walk. I go horseback riding. I, I just enjoy my solitude. But again, you're right. It's, I think it's important to be social too. You don't want to seclude yourself completely. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's really healthy to just always be alone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that kind of develops some social anxiety, which I definitely don't want. Yeah. I mean, like, but it also comes with not drinking. I mean, for me for a while too, I wasn't really getting invited anymore to places. I mean, being, being comfortable in your own skin or being comfortable alone, um, would you say that you are pretty confident like, and, and like your self-esteem and your self-worth, all of that? Is, I think is so. High? I think so. Because, and I was talking to a friend about this and he was telling me he never goes out to eat alone. And for me, I'm like, I freaking love it. Like, I love going out to yeah. eat alone, but it is nice to have company, you know? But, and then there's times too, where if I get invited to certain things like something fitness related. I do love doing that and talking to like-minded people when I have a good time, mm -hmm. but I'd say about an hour to in my, my social meters, like, oh, okay, I'm going to do a little Irish exit here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause I don't, I like the idea of spending time alone. Not, 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 a, not something that's natural to me. Like I, I do probably get a little uncomfortable with it. Like same, I'm not going to go out to eat alone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to go for a hike alone. All those things sound or more so like going for a hike sounds amazing to go alone. Like I know I'd have a really good experience doing that. I just can't bring myself to do it. It's you know? hard. So it um, I'm trying to, you know, I, I tend to overthink everything. I really try to figure out like why, why that is, you know? So that's why I ask, um, that, conf that, that confidence question, you know, cause mm -hmm. a lot of times if we're seeking that external validation, you know, we need to be around people to feel like we're being validated, that's you know, true. cause I can put on a show in front of anybody and then be received a certain type of way. Or if I'm just alone, you know, I'm not validating myself as often as I probably should be. And therefore probably not having <laughs> as much fun. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a trip. Um, no, that's a, that's a hard one. The seeking validation. But for me, I, again, I always go through phases where like, I do want validation, but the other times where I really am like, I don't give a shit. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, Why I mean, should I care? Yeah. I mean, I guess social media is like where that happens, right? Like yeah, what motivates us to media. post? What are we posting? What, you know, cause you can't get away from, you can try to, but it's like a really great window into human nature about like when you're posting and, and you think that you're not concerned with what people are thinking, but there's, yeah, we there's, all, we there's all care. A, I mean, how many times do we watch your own story? Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll make a story. Time. I'm like six looking, times or, you yeah. know, it's, it's, I feel like it's natural though. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think a natural response in a, a natural, unnatural environment. Like it's not a natural thing to have access to that. That's you know, to, to be able to say, you know, so that's just a really weird. And I think we do tend to downplay it as like a natural response, but like the truth is that, you know, we haven't had social media for that long, really long at all. So this whole thing is, is very new to kind of see how it shows up. I mean, it is um, for us. I just, I can't imagine, you know, the younger generation where they, they grew up with Instagram to me. I just, I can't, yeah. I mean, life is hard like that. <laughs> yeah, what is your relationship with Instagram? Because you are very active and you, and you do. I am up and down. I personally, I wish I didn't need it and I wish I didn't have to have it. But then there's times where I'll get a DM from somebody telling them, oh, I'm so thankful you share that. And then little moments like that, I'm like, okay, again, validation. I'm like, okay, this is at least I'm helping somebody. I love helping people. So that kind of is what keeps me going. But then there are those times where what I really want to be sharing, for example, is my workouts they don't only get much attention. It's so people don't, that's, that's the tough thing that I have. Yeah. So following the trends, which sometimes when I do them, I don't feel genuine, but I think at the end of the day, if it helps my business, that's going to help me. So I have to just take a step back sometimes and, and realize I'm going to have to do things that I'm not hundred percent comfortable with, yeah. but in the end, it's not like it's going to affect me negatively. So that's kind of the view I have on that. Curious what those DMs look like. <laughs> Surprising. If people ask me about the DMs, I don't really get that many weird DMs. There was one consistent person that sent me like really just provocative things, but I have thick skin. So to me, I just look at it like, hmm, whatever, but I don't get too many crazy ones. You know, there's the occasional one, send me your socks. I'm like, no. For that, you got actually probably should send socks. <laughs> You probably send us uh, Maybe I should, honestly. You know, <laughs> a little side hustle. Get that cash out and get that money. 
You uh, should, you could be okay. I did have one person send me $20 on Venmo one time. So that Straight was, up, I was like, yeah. wow, I've made it. <laughs> Straight up. That's what's up. Um, yeah, but yeah. my DMs aren't that bad. If anything, sometimes it's more random kind of hate from other women. Oh yeah, really? You know, it's a, it's just little, little silly things, but I, again, I don't care. I don't really take it personally. How do you, okay. do you, do you even, um, give a response? Sometimes, sometimes I don't, I just kind of read them. And I just, you know, sometimes it's, it's like the old city. I want to be petty, but then I realize I'm like, there's no point in even saying anything back because obviously this person is just not in a good mindset. Me adding fuel to the fire is going to make it even worse. Yeah. So I just, just let it go. What, what style of posts do you see, like get the most attention or most like the, the, the response that you're looking for, whether it's from potential clients or. Uh, it's always, you know, it's always about the ass, which. But, and it's, it's probably kinda, not even, is it, I mean, maybe a guy might be commenting on it, mm -hmm. but. Um, Surprising. It's a lot of girls too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, you know, yeah. cause a lot of guys are probably seeing it and catching it in the eye, but, but mimetic theory and like be like, people want to become what they're seeing. Right. So if they're seeing that ass, they, <laughs> they want that ass. If they're seeing that ass. They, they want that ass for themselves. <laughs> you know? Very true. So yeah, I can see that because again, as a guy, you know, we might see that and think like most guys think that that's about them. You know, that that post is being there. Yeah. Like a little thirst, like a thirst trap. trap, you know what I mean? But I can really see how you would get a lot of responses that, you know, be, because Again, a girl wanna, wants to build a booty like that, you know? Yeah. So, but I'm more, I'm more than a booty. You know, but that's sometimes, but that that's they, sometimes like, those holes I, I get into. I'm like, God, I don't want to make everything about my butt. You know, I mean, I'm grateful and I'm thankful I've built it. Yes. You know, I'll admit, I was like, I, it's decent, but sometimes I, I don't want that to be my main thing. Like, yeah. I, and that's, anything like talk about my back. I love my back. You know? uh, yeah. But, but that's the importance of having these types of conversations, right? Like, you know, we're not even going to be talking much about your training. This is like talking about like who you are, your past experiences. And, and that's how people will get to know, you know, Sydney for, for who she is outside of just like that, that photo or that, that video, you know, that caught the eye because, um, I think that's the trap that we can kind of get it's into like sometimes. the billboard bodies, you know, you just, it's all you see, but yeah. Um, I mean, you, since we're on the topic, I mean, you've had a pretty amazing like physical transformation just from like older photos that again, I've seen, mm -hmm. um, what do you, um, you know, what would be your advice if somebody so wanted to transform for me, their body like that? I mean, I definitely just gained more, more muscle. So I used to be very, very skinny, but that was kind of during that time too, where I mean, I did work out in my twenties, but it was mainly to get skinny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all I wanted. That's kind of where drugs came into. I'm like, I'll, I'll take this and it'll make me skinny. Mm -hmm. So I was a cardio bunny. That's all I would ever do. And then finally when I had that shift and I remembered my first pull up ever was in 2019 and that got me so excited. Cause I realized I was like, wow, I can actually, I can do that. I can be strong. So yeah. my mindset now is not the physical aspects of working out. It's more the mindset that comes along with it. And how much better you feel from the inside out and bettering your life just in little aspects, like being able to hold all your groceries in one hand, you know, it's like yeah. little things like that, but those get me excited. Yeah. So that's kind of what I always tell my clients to don't, you know, cause I have clients who may show me a picture. I want to look like this. I'm like, well, you're not going to look like that. You are your own unique body. It's going to yeah. look different, but let's just focus on one thing at a time. Let's work on form a little bit, start adding a little bit heavier weights. And yeah. then the excitement comes out and then you get more committed and then that's, you see more change in your body. And those are, that's the excitement that I like. I mean, shit, I try to show a barber what uh, kind of haircut I want. And I never walk out there with oh, the right yeah, haircut. So imagine like you just like, let me get that, that cookie cutter body right there, whatever it is. It just doesn't work out that no, way. No, it doesn't. Um, when you are working with your clients and, and I think you, you, uh, like, I know how important like having a strong mindset is and, and that being the foundation of a lot of what you do, how much of that do you try to um, instill within your clients around the mindset stuff or is there a, a system or anything that you try? I mean, to I do? try to instill that, but at the end of the day, I can't, I have a hard time convincing somebody over something if their mindset isn't there. But what I found is having them show up consistently, that's when their minds mindset kind of shifts yeah. on their own. So I'm kind of just like a, I'm building little stepping stones for them. Yeah. Which I think is great. Yeah. And, um, I think, uh, you know, although you train largely in person, I mean, a lot of interactions happen, I guess, 
via text message or Instagram or whatever it is, how do you approach that with clients is say you're going into training somebody three times a week. Mm -hmm. Are there any kind of um, boundaries that you set around you know, outreach or um, what does that look like? I usually, mm -hmm. technically I tell my clients it's like past like 9 PM. I probably won't respond, but if I happen to glance at my phone or something and I see an emergency text message, obviously I'll respond, mm -hmm. but I am pretty big on those boundaries because I do, you know, I'm on my phone all day and I, if you can minimize that for me, that'd be great. So I yeah. always tell them like, you know, I am very busy throughout my day. So if I don't respond right away, there's a reason for it. I'm not ignoring you, but obviously if I read something and it's like very important, yeah, I will stop what I'm doing and reach out and make sure they're okay. Yeah. Or I'll send little reminder messages. If somebody is having a hard time with their meal plan, you know, I'll just tell them like, Hey, don't order the, don't order Grubhub tonight. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Stay strong. You have your red text on. My what? Red text. Oh, song. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nobody needs that. Yeah. Nobody needs that. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I don't necessarily, I guess I kind of struggle with that because I really try to make myself available a lot of times. And in part, like I, I feel like I speak pretty openly with like all I got going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think people really understand like what all goes into like operating a business, you know, um, because there's some people that will reach out like a ton and, and, and sometimes I feel like they're, they're feeling a type of way if I don't respond right away mm -hmm. when it's like, I got so much shit going on. No, I've it. had, I've had clients send me texts. Like I need to change my time to this without even kind of explaining like, Hey, this is what's going on. Is there any way you can? And I, I, I can't just, somebody else has that time slot. I can't just yeah. make that happen. I try my best. And sometimes my clients are able to do it and move things around. But yeah, when I get very demanding text messages, I have to kind of take a breath. I'm like, don't react yeah. out of emotion, sit on it for a little bit and then reply. Yeah, no, for sure. And like I, um, I guess I take it as kind of, I guess a pat on the back and where I'm, I might be making this outwardly look easy. Which, yeah. which it's not, I mean, you honestly not, do though. You really do. I mean, that's an absolute fucking trip to me, <laughs> you know? Um, cause I do jump straight into like, if someone asked me how I'm doing, I can't even lie anymore. You know, like I, I don't even try to give you the superficial answer, <laughs> you know, like, I'm stranger, stressed. I'm stressed. You know, what I mean? I mean, you know I, I'll hit them with a little something because yeah. Sometimes I, mean, I say to him, like, you don't want to know. Yeah, just, I mean, let's it's, just it's work out. A, I mean, it, it's, it's an effort to like, to stay sane and to be authentic and be real. And it's like, I do sometimes struggle with, I guess, maybe sharing too much sometimes mm -hmm. because I do too. Um, I'm trying to back off a, from that a little a bit too. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the reason why I feel like I would benefit from sharing less is, is, is again, not really a, a good reason. It's more to be like, to be seen as the expert, mm -hmm. you know, like who do I, aspire to be or who would I ever hire as a coach? You know, I sometimes go to this idea, oh, it's the person who has all these things figured out. But then I remember nobody has these nobody. things figured out. And I know enough no. now because <laughs> I know some of these personalities or these these influencers. I know these people personally. Mm -hmm. And I know <laughs> they they don't have things figured out. No. Not not even close. Right. And it's like that's the thing. Like we end up like judging ourselves based off of the, the image that people put out there. Yeah, only um, their best parts. That's yeah, yeah. what social media is. I mean, even for me, I posted a couple, maybe a couple weeks ago, like a full day. I just posted on my story and I got so much. I was like, wow, like you're doing so much. Like your day looks so fun. I'm like, yeah, I showed you the good parts, but yeah. like it's, I'm stressed, you yeah. know, and I'm struggling at times too, but it's, it just sometimes Instagram yeah, just makes your life look so glamorous yeah. and cool. When in reality, you personally, at least for me, I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've also really received a lot of like really good feedback from like sharing very openly, mm -hmm. which then could put you on that same trajectory of then seeking that, you know, seeking more paths on the back through that, you know, it hasn't gotten to a place where it's like an inauthentic share, you know, oh, I'm crying. Let me cry. And now let me yeah, hold oh, yeah. thing, No, that's too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, because again, people respond to that They do because people like you just mentioned, it might look like I pull these things off. So even if I'm sharing this thing, they're like, Oh wow, that's a whole nother side that they haven't seen. Yeah, so, you're so it proves that you're actually human. Cause yeah. I'm constantly living in like this reflection phase and I do have some, some opportunities to share, you know, so I host a couple of men's group and like, that's just a way for, awesome. for us to like have discussions, open conversations. So I am getting that out output. And sometimes it feels like I'm, I'm always in that because I'm, I'm in that in my head right now, you know, or all the time I'm in that space. 
So sometimes it feels like I'm oversharing, but in reality, I'm probably not. <laughs> um, but it, but yeah, it's like a, it's um, it's a fine line between being like authentic and oversharing and being a professional, but being yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I can kind of check all those boxes, but I'm gonna probably say fuck multiple times <laughs> as I talking as I'm talking to you about Cabo or even taking your coffee order. Mm-hmm. That's just the way I want to roll. Yeah. That doesn't make me any less of an expert or I'm, I'm not an expert. I hate that <laughs> word, but less of a resource. Cause mm-hmm. I know a lot about a lot of things and it's like, um, I still know all that information, whether I choose to say the F word or have tattoos or whatever. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I do. And th- I mean, for me too, having my business, you know, I live in Pasadena. My business is in Pasadena. So there's times, and I think this is good to know too, for some people that are starting a business is you have to realize that you are going to see your locals and those, everybody walking around in your town can be a potential client. So there's sometimes too, I'm like, okay, there's certain things I probably shouldn't say, or, you know, I sh- I need to like behave myself a little bit more. Even it's like little things like getting road rage, you know, that person next to me could have been my next client. You know, yeah. they walk in, you're like, I remember you from the road. So sometimes that's the hard part where you kind of have to tone it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Speaking of road rage, like, do you, do you find yourself getting triggered? Yeah. Still? Is, is it road rage? Oh yeah. That's the thing for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other day I posted on my story. I, you know, sometimes when you have your, I had my phone in my lap and it records your, what you're mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. and it recorded everything I was saying during my road rage. And it was actually, I was, it was open on a text to my client and like, thank God oh, it didn't send, <laughs> but it hilarious. was like every other was like, fuck you, bro. Like, why can you fucking drive? It's ridiculous. But you know, I do that for like maybe 10 seconds and I'm like, such a beautiful day. Yeah. Um, yeah. People like people that are like really, I guess, Laura in particular, she, because the things never get like, we never, uh, we, we can get better at not getting triggered, but we're always mm-hmm. going to be triggered. And like the real flex on like our progress is going to be how quickly we can get back to, um, you know, being impartial to whatever it was that happened. So from the outside looking in, like with Laura, she gets to see that because I feel mm-hmm. most comfortable with her. Right. So like that version of myself is easily accessible and we're getting triggered or getting annoyed because, uh, okay, I don't have to put on a show around this person. So, you know, say you get triggered, but then I respond really fast getting back to normal. Mm-hmm. And that probably looks really psychotic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, even in an argument, probably even in an argument where I think she gets bothered by, because I don't hold grudges at all. Mm-hmm. Like if I say something, I'm going to feel really bad about saying something and probably apologize and then go back to like being super loving, mm-hmm. go from like hate to like love. And like it's a guy like two thing. Seconds. It's a guy thing. I think, I mean, it's just, a. I mean, probably maybe like a female just hold grudges a little bit. Longer. Like for me, I'm one of those people and that's something I'm working on too. But if you do like one wrong thing to me, I, next time I see you, I won't be, I won't be mean. I won't be rude. I'll be cordial, but like deep down, I'm like, I don't care about you. Okay. Mm. Go on. Do you want, do you want to operate that way? Um, mm-hmm. probably not. So it's something I need to work on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and just, you know, knowing that you're, you're into stoic philosophy. I mean, it's like, you know, letting those types right. of things, <laughs> you know, um, and even just like the road rage. I mean, for me, I definitely have had road rage before. And that's an area that I, I really can like mark as progress made because I very rarely get road rage now. And like the thing that I think about in order to not get road rage is the fact that this person has just not know exactly. Me, you know? And that's what I remind myself too. I'm like, I don't know what this person's going through. You don't know where they're going. It's such a it's useful just, reframing. Yeah. Like really instantly you're going to feel better about it because as a, say a man <laughs> getting road rage and someone cuts you off, like it's like this person wants to fight you. No, they don't know <laughs> have anything. Same thing with keyboard warriors or somebody putting that comment. They don't know you at all. Mm-hmm. And they sure as hell wouldn't be doing that if they're face to face with you. Exactly. And you know, that just allows me to let that pass. I did get a pretty nasty bout a couple of weeks ago. It was, I could not calm myself down either. It was, mm-hmm. I was, I was coming in the right lane. This person was merging, you know, trying to merge mm-hmm. onto the freeway and like, you're supposed to zip, you know, yeah. one car, next car, People one car, understand next car. The zipper system. So I'm so let, happy you said that. Is it? Cause I feel That's like it. Americans don't really know. That's it. That's it. <sighs> and so that I let the, you know, and I try to let cars go. That's another mm-hmm. thing that I've practiced. Yeah. As well. And it's so like, nice. Let people go. If you feel good about it instantly let that person go. Then this other car is just like tailing them to try to get in front of me. And then at that point I made the poor decision of now nah, I'm going to I'm not going to let that person go. So then <laughs> uh, I got involved and I was like, I'm going to creep there. up. I'm going to yep. make it tight. And 
came so close to hitting me and I was so fired up. I was like, I was, I couldn't calm down. Like it took me probably 15 minutes to calm down. It was like stop and go traffic. So I was about to like get out of the car and actually do something. And I was like, that's insane yes. that I got there. Cause I pride myself with not being a guy and like mm -hmm. being in control of my emotions. And nah, I got the best of me. It happens. It happens. Every once in a while it happens. You know, I don't do it every day. It just sounds like it was <laughs> very available to you. Very available. It's in there. It's it in is. there, but I try not to, I try, but if someone's in the car with me. It won't happen. No, won't. no, no, no. Okay. Mm -mm. Well, you got to just put one of those dummies in there. You can right. ride in the carpool. And <laughs> I was going to say I can <laughs> carpooling. So with, um, with all that you got going on, um, what are you working on kind of in the near future? Is it just business as usual, still trying to grow clients or what do you? Business as usual, but I am trying to get more into online training. Eventually I would like to have an app and just make it easier for my online clients. Cause I, I just feel like I'm having a hard time finding a good platform to do online training. And I'm very, I'm such a perfectionist because the apps that they have, they have, you know, videos of people performing the exercise, but I want to just do it myself. But that I have to find the time to actually record myself, do every single exercise. So that's something that I really, I have to put time aside to do that because it would be beneficial. Yeah. It would just be an extra income flow, you know, and yeah. then maybe be able to take some more vacations down the road. For sure. So that's ideally, I, th I think my dream would be to just work out, make videos and travel. Yeah. That One day. Great. You know, I guarantee you though, if that online business starts popping off, it's still it's a lot possibility. Of work. Yeah. It's oh, for sure, work, for sure, for sure. Know? But I think I mean, there's a difference. Like I could, you know, be in Bali on my computer. Yeah, I heard that they uh, have like I don't know, like real incentive, real incentives to get people to come over there and work out of there. You know. Oh, Bali. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that. It's meant yeah. to be. <laughs> um, so, in in have you like researched any apps that are out there that you can white label and do or? I mean, I just like to think about those alternatives because you, you can definitely do that. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, and that's the thing. It's like, it's honestly not even that difficult. It's just me making, you know, maybe even just taking a week off so I can record everything and make it look cohesive and nice. That's the problem I'm having. I just, I need to just take a step. Do you, where are you at with, I guess, your mindset around hiring help? Do you feel like that's, you have to do it all? I, I need to do that. Because as much as like my, you know, my little iPhone camera is cool. It's definitely having somebody record it for me. I think it would look better and I would feel better about putting it out. Mm -hmm. So a hundred percent, that's something I should be doing. I mean, when the pandemic first hit, like we did a lot of that mm -hmm. and it doesn't take that much work. A lot of it is just the editing on the back end, like setting up the camera, having mm -hmm. a private space where you can go and just do the thing set the tripod up yeah. and just go right. And it's like not doing multiple ta takes. You just say you're, you're deadlifting yeah. and then you're going to the next movement and the camera's just recording the whole time. And then you just go I'm in just, and yeah. just like chop it up real quick. And that's where it'd be really easy just to hire you know an editor to do that because it's really time consuming. It's it easy, is. but it's time consuming to go chop it, add the text on it, you know, and then save it and upload, you know, like mm -hmm. it takes in a lot of work. I tried to. So actually during the pandemic, I made like an at home guide. So I just, I use the gym I'm at and set up a tripod and just did, you know, body weight exercises. And then I try to put it together in an ebook and I just, I just didn't like the way it looked. And then I gave up. Yeah. So, and then it's like, then I started nitpicking, like my form's kind of off here. I, I don't like the way this looks. And so I, I know going into it in the future, I just, I just have to do it. It's, yeah. it's literally as simple as that. Just do it. I mean, I'm right there with you. I, I literally have an app right now. I've had, this is my second app. Mm -hmm. So I've done this once and you know, I do things a little unorthodox where the app was like the, the funnel of the app was that it was our loyalty program at our cafe. So like rather than getting, um, points based off of how much money you spent, mm -hmm. you got the register you would get points based off of how many steps you took. So it was like an activity oh, tracker cool. and then we'd give reps for that. And that's how you like earn that's points. Awesome. Uh, but I wanted it to be more, right. I wanted it to be more of a core. So, you know, anyway, I have another app that basically is just sitting there waiting to get created. And for me, it's, it's, it's probably helping people facilitate like a breath practice for themselves. So like I have, Dude, I would so get that app. Ideas. I'm so bad at that. And it's just, it is. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, it's, you know, people need what, what you have to offer too. And it's just like, what's preventing us from doing the thing. And, you know, I always had the excuse of like so many different things that I'm working on or whatever it is. But when I'm envisioning the life that I want to lead, that thing is there fueling, um, 
fueling the bank account, honestly, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And um, it would al- allow me to continue to, to take these risks that I do with these like very um, hands-on businesses too. So it's very frustrating to think about it mm-hmm. um, because there's nothing preventing us from, from doing it. It's, true. it's just the resistance for some reason. Like yeah. you could be doing it. I know. <laughs> whether you are living in Bali or just supplementing your, your income through it and living here, like it, it can be be done yeah it can be done i mean i think that vision of actually being in bali might be preventing you from doing it because it's this this um vision for it that is far removed from what you're doing right now where like i mean i just threw bali out there but you know just (laughs) just in general because even just with your existing clients and your current offering it would be a very valuable um offer you know so I'll check in back on with you and see where you're at with that. Right. I um, need that. The accountability. <laughs> or you Nuncio over here sitting behind the camera. He can do all the recording for you. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're at, damn, we're at 50 minutes right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you got a client coming up right I know, now. What so time is it? 303. So your alarm's going to go off. Yeah, like seven, seven minutes if, um, so, <laughs> if we need so it. So <laughs> let's, um, let's go ahead and um, wrap this up. I do have this game here that I stumbled across here. It's yeah, a like pretty games. cool conversation starter. So a big part of like what I do is kind of seek, try to seek discomfort in different areas of my life, oh, whether it's ice baths or whatever. So this company here, Seek Discomfort, they have like uh-huh. a YouTube channel that I've been following for some time. So they came out with a card game okay. and basically you draw a random card and it prompts a question to start a conversation and it really lets you get to know somebody. But this is a fairly easy question for you. Okay. So here, here it is. You ready? <laughs> I don't know why I'm nervous. What are you currently looking forward to? Just as in, in general? Just in general. What's one thing that you're looking forward to? Why is this so hard for me to answer right now? I just Did feel you? like, cause now I'm overthinking it. Uh, I currently am looking forward to honestly just going horseback riding more. I've been going every other day and I'd like to just be able eventually to go every day just cause that besides fitness horses, that's my passion. My, my number one passion. So I think that's, yeah. Solid answer. It's not that soggy ass yeah, sweet green salad that you've been waiting to eat. <sighs> Sweet greens, what happened? It used to be really good. And now it's just, but it's one of those things, you know, I didn't, I was lazy, didn't meal prep. So I, you know. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're all right. <laughs> thank you. Thank all you. Right. Um, but again, I really. What are appreciate. you looking forward to? What am I looking forward to? Um, Sunday is an anniversary. Oh, f- so, four. So, uh, shit, six. Six years? No, I'm going to say this confidently. Seven years, just Seven in case years. it's one of those two. Oh. I need you to edit that out. Seven years, you're basically married, right? Isn't that domestic? It's pretty much, yeah. Like We've that. been inseparable ever since, you know, day one. So I, awesome. I think it is six years, though. Six years. So, yeah, hopefully doing something there. I mean, j- thankfully, she knows that's not really my love language. It's like planning things. So I'm so <laughs> doing these things, you know, just, just like not present a lot of times, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully she has something planned wow which, but at least <laughs> no. hey at least you guys off. know at least the you day know. is off right we're taking the day off and Perfect. we'll be doing something so i'm looking forward to that and i'm looking forward to a happy hour at lifted botanical bar where oh. i can get half off oh, my wow. kava and kratom drinks <laughs> so that's what i have, to, I have to come to. in actually again because kava is i want to i specifically put a night together for you Thursday nights are officially ladies' nights from is it 4 p.m. Really? to 9 p.m. Oh, my God. And, <clears throat> yeah, you should bring some some of your clients over. So no, that's actually, that's a great idea. Like, one of the things, seriously, uh, you should. Cause like, <laughs> seriously. Cause when I, like, <laughs> but come. Just so you know, like, a big part of, like, creating Space Bar and, and, and Lifted and all that is with that vision in mind. Mm-hmm. Like, coming from the fitness industry and, and knowing that we try to build rapport with our clients and, and our members, like, at our gyms. You know, luckily we, we have, um, resources to do things that aren't just your t- typical, Oh, let's go to a bar and have a drink. You know, we, we, we try to present these things. So even in our spots up in Seattle, when we do like community builder things, it's, it's making like kava bar or it's doing ice baths socially, or it's bringing like music together in order to do all that and create the space because before we would just put together a dinner for like our clients and, mm-hmm. and we'd be smashing burgers and drinking beers or whatever it is, which nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just, we're, we're not doing what we could be doing. We were just giving up on the effort there mm-hmm. when we could create something that's way more in alignment with our clients goals, because it we might be sense. on track for 10 to 15 years of having healthy habits and doing this, but majority of our clients aren't, they're six months in maybe, or, you know, three months in. So why are we, 
then repeating this whole um, <laughs> reward system around those types of things, you know, it's planet fitness it, stuff. It's ridiculous, <laughs> right? No, for sure. So, so we're doing like the space bar and, um, and I lifted like that. I mean, I think probably the first conversation I've ever had with you going into, I've mentioned that like people coming in and doing a sauna together, like a trainer bringing their client in and building rapport over doing some like version of recovery together. Like that can happen there. And I want to see that. And even with lifted, like for sure, come and have a little bit of a social night, get to know each other outside of the gym. Like I would love to, to see that. Well, that's great. And you get to say 50% yeah, off. Hey, <laughs> um, but, awesome. um, let the people know where they can find you again. I, I am releasing this more locally here on our emails and stuff. So, um, if you are local in Pasadena, where can people get in touch with you? Um, so you can find me at fight Academy in old town, Pasadena. My Instagram is Sydney flagging. So it's my last name is a little tough. Maybe I'll change it soon. Um, my website is sydneyflagging.com. I do have a TikTok. I rarely use it, but Sydney P fitness. So okay. those are the platforms that I'm on. Beautiful. Everything else is fake. <laughs> that's it. And, um, and, uh, you can also find her at lifted botanical bar Thursday night. Thursday night. That's nine, right. That's right. Off that cava. <laughs> um, but really appreciate your time. Thanks for everyone listening. And if you guys are in passing again, you can come find some of our businesses, space bar wellness or lifted botanical bar, or reach out to me at cub underscore Saldana. Would love to hear you guys' feedback or anything you guys might be struggling with i'm here for those conversations and uh, until next time we're out of here thank you so much it was of a course. pleasure see ya bye <laughs> all right thanks so much for tuning into another episode it would mean the world to me if you help us grow the show and how you do that is by leaving a review or even sharing a screenshot of this on your instagram story or something um, there might be somebody in your world that this might resonate with. So any effort to spread the word is greatly appreciated. And you can also reach me at cub underscore Saldana. Shoot me a DM. Would love to hear your feedback, questions, or anything that you might be interested in us talking about. So until next time, see you later.